Today, I wanna to talk about your fishing line. If you fish, you've used fishing line. It is literally our direct connection between us and the fish that we are trying to catch. So it's extremely important to understand every different aspect, every different nuance about the fishing lines that you are using. And over the course of the years of me fishing, there are really three big things that I've learned that uh, incorporate braided lines or fluorocarbons and monofilaments that I think every angler should know. And in today's video, that's what I wanna talk about. Before I talk about those three big things, I do wanna let everybody know that there is just a few more days left at Fin Fishing to get my USA made sun shirts at a large discount. To, this, is, this is one of the only sun shirts on the market that is made in the US. It's something that I'm really, really proud of, something that I've been working on for almost a year to try and come up with. Uh, well, really actually more than that. So anyways, if you guys want to pick up some shirts or some hats or some gloves, I'm gonna leave a link down below in the description. You can click on those, you can get them discounted literally until the end of the year. December 31st, this sale goes away. All right, let's get into the three big tips. And the first one I wanna talk about actually involves your braided line. And braided line to me, back in the day when I first started fishing like 20 plus years ago, I didn't use a whole lot of braid. But over the years, especially with all the different new knots that are out there, like the FG knot, it's not really a new knot, but it's such an efficient knot and I've learned how to tie it that I use a braid to fluorocarbon leader often in my fishing. But because I use braid so much more these days, I've learned a few things about braid that some of them kind of go against the grain when it comes to a lot of anglers. And that's what I wanna talk about right now. So the big thing with braids is that there's not humongous differences in the different brands of braid that you buy. The biggest differences is in the carrier braid that you buy. For the most part, when it comes to braided line, you have a lower carrier braid, like a four carrier braid, and you also have a high carrier braid, like an eight carrier or a nine carrier braid. Now, if you don't know what that means, basically, if you think about braided line, the way that it is made, is literally like the name implies, it's braided together. It's, it's, it's woven together. So a four carrier braid means that there are four different ropes or lines that are woven together to make that single strand. I guess strand is the word I should use. Uh, and an eight or nine carrier braid is, is eight or nine different strands woven together to make that one braided line. That is how braided line works. Now, the biggest differences in the low carriers and the high carriers is that the high carrier braids are typically a lot more smoother. They typically keep their shape a little bit better. Um, a lot of people say that they cast better, and I'm actually going to talk about that in a, in a minute here because I don't necessarily think that is true. Um, but they are a lot more supple of a line. Like when you hold it in your hand, it's not a rigid line. Where the lower carriers, like the four carriers, is a more rigid line. It's a little bit more durable of a line as well. Now, over the years, I think it has become really popular to use a high carrier braid because people think that they cast further, especially when, you talk, when you're talking about using it on a spinning rod. For example, this is the braid that I use. This is Power Pro. It's a 10 pound test, but this is a four carrier braid. Now this is gonna be my opinion. So do with it what you want. But I believe that the lower carrier braids on a lower diameter pound test, like 10 pound test, will lead to a lot less issues than the higher carrier braids do. I have used a lot of high carrier braids in that 10 pound test range. And I tell you what, they, they just have a lot of issues. And the biggest issue that you see with them is a lot of wind knots. When you use a really supple line, especially if you use a spinning rod a lot and you are catching a lot of fish, like I fish for a lot of smallmouth where I'm using a lot of, uh, where I'm catching a lot of fish, they're pulling a lot of drag. And when you go to cast that braid in the wind, you get wind knots all the time with those higher carrier braids as opposed to the lower carrier braids that are a little bit more rigid. Now, I also believe, and this is the thing that is really opinion because I don't have any kind of scientific fact other than me using this, and usually I try to provide a lot of facts here, but I believe that you can actually cast baits a little bit further with a low carrier braid in the low pound test 
than you can with the higher carrier braids. And the reason being is that if you watch a like a 10 pound test going through a spinning rod, when it comes off the spool, the higher carrier braids make a bigger loop. And that bigger loop has to go through all of those guides. And when you have a big loop going through guides, it creates a lot of friction, which slows that bait down. Now, because the low carrier braid is more of a rigid line, I have seen that it comes out in a tighter, um, a tighter loop. And that tighter loop is a little bit more, sh more straight, a little less friction. And I really feel like you can cast baits, lures, further with a low carrier as opposed to a high carrier, which goes against the grain out there in fishing. Now, when it comes to the higher pound test, like I use a lot of 65 pound test, I do believe that with 65 pound tests, you can cast a bait further on a bait caster with a higher carrier braid. So that's kind of the big difference there. And it's just something that I've seen. I really love to hear your guys' input when it comes to the braided line. Now, for me, I primarily use low carrier braids across the board, board except for that high pound test. And the biggest reason is actually not for casting distance for me, when I am using a high pound test, like 65 pound braid, for example, when I'm flipping down in Florida in grass, I like that high pound test because that braid coming in and out of the, the grass makes a lot less noise than the, the lower carrier tests, okay? It's a lot more quiet of a line. And in really highly pressured situations, I believe that is the difference between getting bites a lot. So I, that's something that I've seen on the water with fishing with other people where you will get a lot more bites than other guys simply because of the noise that that line makes as it's rubbing through the lily pads or the Kissimmee grass or whatever it may be. So that's my big uh, thing that I wish I'd known about braided line. Now, the next thing that you should know actually implies a little bit more to your fluorocarbons in your monofilaments. Now, fluorocarbons and monofilaments the, the big thing that you should know is that the size, the pound test, the diameter of the, the line that you are using greatly impacts the lures that you are using in a number of different ways. And the way that it impacts that lure can mean the difference between getting a few bites and going out there and catching a lot of bites. For example, when I grew up, I always thought that people, like when I didn't know a lot about fishing, I thought when people would downsize their line, it was because the fish couldn't see the line as good if it was six or eight pound test, as opposed to it being 12 or 14 or 15 pound test. That's just what my brain thought. But over the years, what I know now is that it's not necessarily about them being able to see that line. Because, for example, fluorocarbon line, you're not supposed to see in the water hardly at all. But when you step down in line, it impacts the lure that you're using a lot less. And when it's impacting that lure a lot less, it makes that lure look a lot more natural. And that lure looking a lot more natural is what gets you more bites. For example, if you were to use a finesse worm, a, a four to six inch finesse worm on a Texas rig, if you use that with 18 pound test versus 10 pound test, the way that that bait moves in the water looks drastically different. Because when you're using that small finesse worm, if you have a higher pound test, it's dragging that pound test a lot. Like that, that there's a lot of drag with a higher pound test and it, it, it impacts that bait. And that's really, really important to understand. Another thing that this is kind of a side note, but it does, especially for you guys that throw jerk baits, one thing that I was always taught or learned about throwing a jerk bait is that if you wanna keep a jerk bait really high in the water column, step up your pound tested. You know, use, uh, I use 10 or 12 pound test a lot for jerk baits. And so when I would go to lakes where I'm like, I wanna keep that bait pretty high, I would step up to 15 pound. Well, what I found out is I was still hitting the bottom, hitting the grass. And now with the advancements of technology, what we have kind of found out is if you're working a jerk bait kind of at a medium to slow pace, that higher pound test fluorocarbon line that you use will sink. And the, the, the higher that pound test is, 
the more that it wants to sink and it will literally drag your bait down. So if you're thinking of stepping up or keeping that jerk bait high in the water column and going up to a higher pound test fluorocarbon is gonna do that, it's actually the exact opposite, especially if you're working it slow. If you're working it fast, it may help keep that bait up there a little bit higher in the water column. But when you work it really slow, that line has time to sink and drag that bait down. So understanding how the different diameter fishing lines that we use impacts our baits is really, really important. One, one, one other thing that I want to say on this point is that, you know, there are baits out there where it doesn't make a big difference. For example, a spinner bait, you know, a spinner bait already has a lot of drag when it comes to lures out there. So if you use 15 pound tests versus 20 pound tests, it's not going to make a substantial difference in the way that that lure is, is, going down there on the bottom. So in that case, I like to use a higher pound test. Why not? Especially with the spinner bait, because I'm throwing it a lot of times around a lot of wood cover or docks or whatever it may be. So I want to get away with the highest pound test that I can. Another bait that's like this is a chatter bait. You know, a chatter bait is very similar and the way that it comes through the water, um, it's not, it has a lot of drag already. So it's not impacted much by your line size. So then now moving on to the, the third thing, and this is really, really important, is that not every line out there when it comes to fluorocarbons and monofilaments are built the same, especially fluorocarbon line. Fluorocarbons, if, they're, if they all say 20 pound tests, you're gonna have some that stretch way more than others. You're gonna have some that are way more durable. They break at a higher pound test. And the reason that I know this is because I spent three weeks of my life testing out different fluorocarbon lines. And I did over 700 tests and I actually made a video of it. I'm gonna link, leave it linked right here. So if you wanna know what I think is the best fluorocarbon on the market, you can actually watch me test out a ton of them right here. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget about that fin fishing merch and I will see you guys in the next video.